if you were going to tell a movie director to recreate your 2012 Olympic race in London, what would you tell him to do? Well, for the final, I I would just say that we um, we had a we had a decent start, um, but we weren't you know we weren't quite in the heat with the top two crews, and then uh, so we were about a length down pretty early in the race uh, on the on the leading two crews, and then in the middle thousand. We really hit our rhythm, went to work, and started eating into them. And uh, by the 1500, um, we were getting really close to the second place. And then um, first and second, they kind of held us off for the last bit. And Britain moved out a bit. I think we held the margin with the Australians and ended up getting third. Um, I kind of remember one moment. I was just remember we were up a length, I think, on Greece. So we were in third. They were in fourth. And I just, I just remembered that. Uh, I just didn't think that, you know, I just knew that we have like 70 strokes to win a medal and if I go really hard they won't be able to catch us. So. After that race, do you remember what you said to your teammates or what they said to you, what your coaches said? Uh, well, I remember right away I was really, I was like, it was a little disappointing because like we finish and you're, you have this dream, you know, you have like, people say they don't let themselves think about it, but it's like, everyone dreams about winning gold at the Olympics so when it didn't happen it's like at first you're just kind of like oh like it was a bit of a letdown um, but then I think when I when I really like calmed down I saw how uh, how excited my family was and how excited everyone was I think it really allowed me to like realize how special it is uh, and I'm really proud of it obviously now and but right away, the first reaction was a little bit disappointing. Do you feel more pressure to make the Olympic team after already having made the Olympics, or does the process feel more comfortable? I would say it's much more comfortable. Um, I'm not like nobody. You never like expect to make it, but um, the first the first Olympic cycle, it's you know it may never happen again, right? Whatever happens could take you out. You could get an injury, and you'll never go to the Olympics. You could you know be on the wrong side of a selection process and you know, you have a bad day and you're doing your seat race for the boat, last spot in the boat and you don't make the Olympics and you're never going to the Olympics. Like, that's a possibility. But this time around, uh, it's, I'm, it's more relaxed because I've been there, but also because, like, I have that under my belt. Like, I've gone to the Olympics, I won a medal, and I could, like, break my leg tomorrow and I would feel great about my rowing career. Um, but, you know, the reason, we're, the reason I came back is to... Not make it's not to make the Olympic team; it's to win a gold medal, and so it's a little bit of a different goal. Um, you know, I think so. Obviously, making that you can't win a gold medal if you don't make the team, um, but it's kind of part of the process, I think, more than than like such a you know the thing that you dream about. Like making an Olympic team is a huge dream of you know a lot of people, and it doesn't happen for most people. Um, you know, but. It's, so it's it's a little different. My goal is different this time. Um, you always want to win all the time, but you know, I mean, there's a big difference between like not going and going and having gone. It's now it's you know, it's I'm not just here to to collect the gear. I'm here to win the gold. Who is your current coach? And if you were describing his style to a stranger, what would you say? Yeah, I, we have uh, two coaches. We have Volpenheim and uh, McGee, Luke McGee and Brian Volpenheim. And uh, I would say Brian is, he's been my coach for the last three years in the four. Um, more, I've been coached by him more than I have by Luke, um, just because, you know, once we break into boats, like Brian's been the coach of the four. Um, and he's, he's a very good coach. He's a very, you know, he's a very, he's patient, he's methodical, but He's also laid back enough that he lets you kind of like, he, he gives you enough rope to hang yourself with. And, but you know, it's, it's um, you gotta, you gotta he, he like lets you take, take, care, uh, take charge of your own destiny almost. And um, it's, it's hands off, but not too hands off. It's a good mix. Um, and then the two of them are very good together and I think uh, have a, uh, a good balance of intensity and relaxation. When you're an Olympic level athlete, what do you need from a coach to be effective? We need someone to show up and tell us when we're doing it wrong and to set a good training program for us and, uh, and keep us in check and keep pushing us and that's what we have. You know, I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science. Uh, we just gotta make the boat go fast and if we're doing something to hinder that, they need to tell us and they need to make a program that gets us as fit as possible by, the, uh, by, the, by Rio and I think we have that for sure. Who is the best coach you have ever had and why? I would say Harry Parker. 
Uh, so I wrote at Harvard under Harry, and he, um, I think he just allowed me to uh, raise my game from what I, you know, I, like from rowing in high school to rowing at college and then to the national team. I think he developed me a lot as an athlete. Um, but you know, I, I know I have I know all my coaches. I remember all of them, and uh, they're all they've all helped me uh, become a better rower. Um, but uh, yeah, particularly Harry, who was four years at Harvard, and he's uh, he was a very good coach.